and welcome to today's session. Thank you all for joining today's Leveraging Women's Voices and Experiences to Inform the Strengthening Systems for Safer Childbirth Initiative, a virtual seminar focusing on Kenya and Nigeria. We are all thrilled to be here speaking to you today. White Ribbon Alliance is hosting this event in support of the launch of the Strengthening Systems for Safer Childbirth Initiative and to help provide a roadmap for community coalitions interested in expanding their work to include direct engagements of women as part of the strengthening solutions for addressing maternal mortality. Over the course of this seminar, we will be covering the What Women Want's groundbreaking open-ended question methodology, which puts women's and girls' demands for quality healthcare at the center of policy decision-making processes. We'll also be sharing in-depth examples from Kenya and Nigeria on what women want campaigns, grassroots mobilization processes, and national and subnational level outcomes. We will be highlighting what women want methodology and key findings, approaches, and results. And at large, for and, and a large focus of this seminar will also sh be showcasing how to use the What Women Want data to drill down on women's demand and identify multi-sectoral linkages to foster more holistic solutions as part of the strengthening systems for safer childbirth expressions of interest. Before hearing from our colleagues from MSD for Mothers, who will share a little bit about the strengthening systems for safer childbirth initiative, I want to introduce myself and my partner. My name is Angel Katusia. I'm a senior communications manager at White Ribbon Alliance. I'm based in the Nairobi Kenya hub. I was largely involved in the What Women Want campaign in, the, in 2018 and 2019 and continuously to work and continuously working with the team in Nairobi to see change that has been driven by women voices. I will let my colleague Taria Adams from Nigeria to introduce herself. Taria. Hello everyone, it's great to be here and thank you, Angel. My name is Taria Adams. I, I, Taria, can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes, can you hear me? I'll give her a few minutes, but Taria is the WRA's movement builder based in Abuja, Nigeria, and was, was one of the key leaders in the 2018-2019 What Women Want campaign in Nigeria, Abuja. Next slide. We'll now pass it over to our Hello, colleague, Semitayo, who will share more on the strengthening systems for, safe, for safer childhood initiative. Tayo, up next to you. Hi, everybody, and thanks so much for, for joining this call. Um, I hope everybody can hear me okay. Um, sorry, we can actually hear you. Um, I'm not sure uh, why Angel couldn't hear you, but I could hear you. I'm not sure whether others have the problem as well. Um, but my uh, little part of my presentation is really to welcome you all and to provide a bit of a um, context. In terms Tell me, Tara, I'm not sure whether we can hear you. Can you hear me? Hi, all. Tayo, we can hear you. Um, we could also hear Taria. I think she might have an issue with her audio. I'm messaging her on the side. Okay, great. Uh, one more great question. Great, that basically. Can you hear me? Um, so as I was saying, uh, my uh, part of my uh, my role today is to really just provide a bit of context in terms of why uh, we're doing the safe uh, strengthening system for safe childbirth initiative. Um, ahead of uh, the White Ribbon Alliance um, uh, team sharing with you more about um, why women voices are so pivotal to what we're trying to do. Yeah, so next slide. So then provide um, uh, some, some context into what we're trying to achieve. Um, this initiative was, is really driven by trying to address uh, four things, um, to be catalytic in terms of trying to address four things. One is that we understand um, the, uh, the need to accelerate progress um, to help achieve um, SDG 3.1, to help reduce maternal mortality across the globe. At the current rate of progress, um, we're just not gonna get there. 
So we need to really double it, um, our efforts uh, to make sure that we we hit target. Um, focusing on Africa, for example, we're actually not going to meet uh, our goals um, at the current rate uh, of progress until something like 2085. So clearly there's a gap um, in terms of uh, our current efforts to address this. And this needs to happen in the context of an annual deficit in terms of funding, uh, which the uh, the global finance facility estimates is something like three hundred uh, thirty three billion dollars annually. And then we have um, the fact that basically the pandemic has also exacerbated um, uh, the challenges in terms of maternal health service delivery across the globe, not least in Africa, um, and as even so like further even regress in some settings some of the gains that we've we've made but it also actually has highlighted the potential for private sector to augment government's responses um, in developing and advancing uh, innovations that can help us um, meet some of the challenges ahead and then last but not least too often um, we see that uh, the solution that are being put forward and the priorities that are being advanced are those not necessarily of the local communities and people um, within the communities that we're trying to work to try and support, but actually so are led by uh, donor priorities um, and too often um, those voices of, of, of women um, are left um, off the table in terms of the solution that they want that speaks to their immediate needs um, and also long term sustainability of, of, of um, innovations that are being forwarded. Um, so this is very much at the heart of what we actually were here to, to discuss today, the last point, um, but obviously it's with a, a view in mind of helping us to get to our goal of reducing maternal mortality. Next slide. So the strength systems for safer childbirth is really trying to put local actors in the driving seat. Hence why we felt that it was really important to, um, to hear from the White Ribbon Alliance team uh, through the uh, and, and part of the um, the World Women One campaign, which has really uh, demonstrated what can be achieved when we actually listen to women, as radical as that may be, who are the um, the people that are actually accessing the services that we're trying to to develop um, in, in in settings that we're talking about today in Nigeria and Kenya. So we want to try and focus on multilateral co coalitions um, where that are working on at a state, city, district, or country level uh, to implement evidence-based solutions um, that prioritizes, as, as I mentioned earlier, on the local uh, uh, needs of, of women that let that is led by local organizations. We also want to scale the, uh, the integration and contribution from local private sector in mixed health systems. As I mentioned earlier on, um, I think the pandemic has shown us the possibilities in terms of leveraging capacity of private sector to respond to, to needs on the ground, uh, improved by improving uh, system efficiencies, responsiveness, and, and also building resilience in the wider, uh, wider systems. Um, and then also want to encourage um, you all uh, that are here today to really leverage pre-existing investments and efforts rather than creating um, siloed, um, uh, reinventing the wheel in, so in some settings that we, as we all can point to examples where things like this have happened in the past, or really how do we actually sort of like you know, capitalize on the work that's already on ground, either ongoing or has been established. And last but not least, uh, not least I want to uh, fuel uh, collective action um, by you know, bringing uh, co-funding approaches and come uh, to, to together um, so that we can actually do more. Next slide. So in terms of, uh, as you all know, I'm hoping that most people on this call had jo uh, joined the previous calls um, related to the expression of interest that is currently out related to Strengthening System for Safe Childbirth Initiative. Next slide. The process uh, for this is is as you can see here on the slide. Um, we launched an expression of interest back in September the 14th. Um, the uh, submission for those are due uh, on 15th of November, so in a couple of weeks. Um, and we have a month in which to review um, uh, those applications um, and uh, to uh, get back to uh, successful um, or to get back to everyone by the 15th of December, 
um, and then we have a period of a, a few months uh, for those that are, are successful in terms of uh, advancing their expression of interest uh, to develop a full proposal that will be due in March uh, 31st. And then we'll take in some time to, re to, to, to review those proposals, um, to develop um, those in, uh, in, in collaboration with, um, uh, with, with, with partners. And then um, we have a, a couple of months between uh, uh, yeah, May and July, where we'll be developing the contract um, for um, the Strength and System Childbirth Initiative. So that's the bit of a timeline in terms of what we're working to. This process, we thought, we, um, in terms of engaging with the White Ribbon Alliance, is, is, is very important to help you in terms of um, ensuring that basically what we're developing is responsive to local needs and um, is integrating um, at the heart of it uh, the voices and needs of, uh, of, of women on the ground. So next slide. And that's pretty much from my uh, from my side. I just want to thank you again for making the time to to join this call, um, and I will pass it over to uh, the White Ribbon Alliance team. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for that. For those less familiar, White Ribbon Alliance is a global network whose mission is to propel people-led movement for women's and girls' health rights. When we formed 20 years ago, it was because of the voices of women were being unheard, resulting in slow and uneven progress in maternal health. Many things have changed in the interim, but one thing remains as true today as it did through the will of the people. As such, in 2019, based on an early advocacy campaign in India, in India, White Women Alliance, White Tribune Alliance launched the What Women Want demands for quality, reproductive, and maternal health. It began with a simple idea: ask those who most use maternal and reproductive health services to tell us what they most need. Ask the clients, ask women and girls. As part of the What Women Want, women and girls from all different parts of the world and all different walks of life shared many of their intimate experiences, often in the name of helping others. Men were eager to speak up. No one had ever asked them before. In the end, the What Women Want campaign was a million plus unique encounters in 114 countries, the vast majority from India, Kenya, Malawi, Mexico, Nigeria, Pakistan, Tanzania, and Uganda. What is your top priority for your maternal and reproductive health care? Our open-ended question, let women and girls set their gender as opposed to beginning with a premise of what is important or asking them to decide among a set of options. The power of first asking women what they want and then acting on their demands has proven to be an accelerator for change. Next slide, please. Since mid 2019, what women want demands have resulted in more than 20 major related policy wins and mobilizations over $11 million in domestic funding for reproductive, maternal and newborn child health services and supplies in the eight countries. A major resource win was in Pakistan. After 100,000 women made demands for increased family planning, the KP provisional government increased their population welfare department budget by over 50 percent, more than eight million dollars, and this was during COVID when our MNHCH budgets were being slashed. This and other impressive policy, resource, and system wins, but we also want to highlight the more than 350 facility upgrades that have, that have happened as a result of the campaign. These are major upgrades, running water, operational blood banks, gender-based violence, and disability services in places where none existed before. 
The campaign has also led to deployment of over 2,000 healthcare workers. Half of these are midwives from Malawi, representing about 50% increase in the overall midwifery workforce since 2017 in this country. Following a directive from the Malawi's president after hearing the What Women Want results, this really highlights the action that can result when there is a clear community mandate for change. Facility and personal changes are often dismissed or overlooked in the advocacy world, but these are the changes that mean most to women and girls. These changes, these are the changes they can see in their backyard, the changes that inspire them to seek services and to continuously speak out. Taria and I will be providing in-depth examples of the power of what women want in both Kenya and Nigeria, and we'll also speak to the importance of involving communities at every stage of program planning. I will let Taria to go ahead and give us examples from Nigeria and what they've been able to do since 2018 and 2019. Thank you, Angel. Um, I don't know if everybody had new and introduced myself. My name is Taria Adams. I work as the movement builder for WRA. And previously, I was the communication and advocacy officer for Work Women Alliance Nigeria. And I was a big part of the What We May Want campaign here. In Nigeria, the What We May Want campaign took a national approach, but it was a lot of the work was done, about 50% of the work was also focused in Niger states because Niger states was our primary target at the time. WRA Nigeria reached about 80,000 women during the Works Women campaign. The women, we reached women in communities, women in health centers and women in urban areas. And so we had a mix of women across that we reached with the campaign. And when we analyzed the results of 80,000 voices, unique voices, um, we, we aggregated them and got top 10, 10 top demands. And I will just talk about the first three demands. Number one was water, sanitation, and hygiene. Number two was respectful and dignified care. Number three was increased competence and better supported health providers. And so women were saying they, were, they, they needed cleaner health facility, wash facilities, wash to be installed in facilities for them to go to facilities. Women demanded to be better treated by health workers and women themselves said that they needed more midwives. And so armed with the demands of women, we created an advocacy plan and we said that we created an advocacy agenda. The advocacy agenda was simple, to reach women, to take the demands of women to decision makers so that decision makers could make better informed decisions that reflected the needs and demands of women. And so uh, one of the things that we did was, um, we already had an existing campaign that engaged decision makers and we leveraged on the existing campaign to showcase the demands and the voices of women. How did we do that? We did that through dialogue sessions. We did that in platform, excuse me. We did that in platforms where we brought women themselves to speak for their needs. We did that at community levels where in communities where there was a structure of engagement, we supported women to speak up in those meetings and talk about their demands. And we started getting some results from these engagements. One of the things that happened was um, before the What Women Want campaign, there's something in Nigeria, there's a policy called the Basic Healthcare Provision Fund. And the information, the demands of women were used to support the business case development for those funds and the funds were released to all 274 words in Niger states. But that's not all. Even while the funds were released, but in some facilities, there was no water. I remember that number one demand for women was water. We supported women to engage with community leaders who were responsible and signatories to the fund to use some of the funds to provide water in health facilities. And so the investment cases were made in view of women's demand and 10 health facilities got water as a result of the what women want demands and advocacy. And number uh, also one of the things that we did was we engaged the 
the, the management of the primary health care, the women's agency in Niger states, where we, we, we brought women to speak to the leaders, decision makers directly, where the decision makers were told, where women were able to engage the decision makers directly and talked about the state of health facilities in view of lack of the poor, the poor wash installments in facilities. As a result of that, there is a new policy in Nigeria where health facilities will now have six toilets as against the four that previously was in all facilities. And in fact, even though the plan said all facilities, all four toilets in all facilities, some facilities had only one toilet. But moving forward as a new policy and directive to ensure that PACs have at least six toilets. This all shows the power of women and how women's voices can actually direct policy and program implementation at state and even at national level. Also, one of the demands, the number third demand was increase more competent midwife, we, midwives. We engaged the National Association of Nurses and Midwives with the demands of women. And when we engaged them and we did an assessment, we realized that truly the number of midwives were almost next to nothing. For a state, for a state like Niger State, Niger State had 64 midwives that were employed by government to attend to over 1.2 million Women, of, women and girls of reproductive age. Taking those figures, we, we, we built the capacity of the association to deal direct, to advocacy directly with government. We supported them by creating a video to tell the stories of women. Through their advocacy, the government is currently, government has started in employing over 100 midwives and 50 nurses. For us, this tells us the power of women and how women's voices, when included in decision-making, when women speak up, when women are part of identifying the problem and preferring solution, healthcare services can be improved, healthcare outcomes can be accelerated, and we will, we will be on a faster track to get to the SDGs. I will get back to my, to my colleague, Angel. Angel, please take it from here. Thank you, Tara. Um, yes, I can hear you. In Kenya, about 118,000 women and girls voiced their demands. These were drawn from different counties, from Bungoma in Western Kenya, to Kajado, a predominantly nomadic community, to Kisumu, the lake region, to Nairobi, the capital city, just to mention a few. Uh, the top demands in Kenya, I'll just mention four. Our top demand in Kenya was water, sanitation, and hygiene. Most women expressed the need for availability of clean water and clean toilets in health facilities. Our second top request was respectful and dignified care. Women and girls want, do not want to be verbally abused in health facilities. They do not want to be harassed or they don't want rudeness from medical staff. Our top number three request from women and girls was menstrual health, where provision of sanitary towels and pads, mostly among the adolescent girl, was a key ask. Based on this, we set up an action agenda and objectives to action on these demands. One of our key win and outcome has been a project in Kajado County, dubbed SDG5 in Kajado. The SDG Forum Kenya, which is a, the agency lead, has been implementing a three-year program titled Strengthening the SDG Kenya Forum as an accountability platform for gender and development. The project aims at influencing decision-making institutions and processes in the implementation of SDG 5 by holding local government accountable in the promotion, planning, financing, and implementation of SDG 5 and gender equality priorities in six counties. And Kajado was the county where WRA Kenya was leading the project. In Kajado County for the last, we've been in Kajado County for the last three years, but working closely with departments of gender, gender technical working groups, local civil society organizations and grassroots groups to support and sustain efforts on inclusive leadership to integrate gender into county governance and service delivery. The project was a result of What Women Want campaign done in 2018, where Kajado County had the highest number of responses 
from Kenya. The baseline indicated that women and girls in Kajado had no existing policies that spoke to the cases of gender-based violence that they encounter, such as FGM, child marriage, and women were not consulted and involved in decision-making processes for issues concerning their health, such as delivering in hospitals, immunization, menstrual health, and hygiene. The project created a platform for women voices to be included in policy making for both the anti-FGM and the gender mainstreaming. These voices were all from the What Women Want campaign in 2018 and 2019. The key demands from the women from Kajado were to access water, hygiene and sanitation, availability of clean water at home, hospitals and schools, and this meant running water in facilities. On access to health, there were demands to establish an integrated adolescent and youth friendly health service in all facilities, develop policies, community engagement and strategies that enhance productive rights of women and girls and adolescent, adolescent girls in Kajado County. As of today, two policies, the gender mainstreaming policy and the anti-FGM policy have been launched. WRA Kenya was actively involved in the formulation, development, and the launch of the two. After the policy launch, White Ribbon Alliance Kenya has been targeting lawmakers and decision makers at the county assembly in charge of budgetary allocation committees. We have facilitated a budget advocacy campaign that included training the budgeting committee on gender responsive budgeting to ensure that the county budgets are gender responsive enough that they integrate and that they integrate the needs and priority of women and girls. The commitments from these workshops have been to review the annual development plan that include the budget lines for the four priority areas of gender mainstreaming policy, that is access to health, wash, education, and poverty eradication. This is just one of the two key wings in Kajado, but I'll add a few, you will have more time at the end. Also, on demands for increased fully functional and closer health facilities, our advocacy agenda objective was to ensure target health facilities in Bungoma and Makueni counties are fully equipped with specialized outpatient and inpatient infrastructure that respond to the needs of women and adolescents and persons living with disabilities, including providing accessible ramps, maternity beds, and translation services. We have over the past two years been running a UHC project dubbed UHC for me in target counties where we've been working with women and girls living with disabilities, listening to their needs and also including their voices that they voiced in 2018 and 2019 on what they really wanted most to, to access dignified and quality healthcare in different facilities. Women and girls living with disabilities in Bungoma and Makueni County told us that health facilities are not conducive. They lack ramps for accessibility, delivery beds are not adjustable, toilets are not fit for persons living with disabilities. And this may look like very small ask, but these have made many women and girls living with disabilities stay away from going to hospitals, particularly during delivery even with the risk that can be involved. Women and girls living with disabilities also requested for sign language interpreters and special training for health workers to be able to understand them better. In Bungoma and Makueni, we have seen improvements in the facilities after bringing women and girls living with disabilities together, training them and working with grassroots organization to empower them with advocacy skills and to link them with county governments, health departments for them to be able to voice their demands. We have seen commitments and budget allocations for construction of disability friendly toilets in four facilities in Bungoma County. We have physically seen ramps that have already been constructed to ease accessibility. And in both counties, women and girls have spoken to us and say they are being treated better than before with dignity and they're given priority when they go to seek health services in facilities in the counties. In Makueni County particularly, a petition has been passed to deplace sign language interpreters in the, sub, in the six sub counties. 
When I talk about six sub-counties, it's because health in Kenya is devolved and changes must be happening on the sub-counties, which are the local county government, which are supposed to implement changes in sub-county hospitals. In both counties, Bungoma and Makueni, we have seen commitment to conduct disability mainstreaming training for health workers. In, just to mention one more, in Bungoma County, a commitment for the county government to revamp two maternity wards in two sub-county hospitals has been made, as well as a budget allocation to equip the wards with disability-friendly delivery beds. I will let Diana play a video from Kajado County to just show how the scenario was before. I use my power to educate and empower women and girls on their sexual reproductive health rights. from a community that practices harmful traditions like FGM and early marriages. Girls at the age of nine years old get married and they get mutilated or cut. And at the same time, they'll get pregnant at a very young age. In this village, women will walk kilometers. The nearest hospital here in Kajado town is 30 kilometers away. My neighbor has given birth before in a field, in an open area, alone. In the What Women Want campaign, we are asking women what is their top request for maternal health and reproductive health. Women before didn't have a voice. Today they have a voice. They can like choose what to do with their own bodies. They can be part of the decision-making process. You see, they're demanding for health rights. They're demanding for quality health care. Thank you, Diana, for that. There are so many wins that have happened in different countries, and White Ribbon Alliance is developing a win map that is going to articulate all these outcomes, and that will be released soon for people to see all that. What you're seeing on slide now is a quote from the County Director, Gender and Social Service in Kajado County, Kenya. After being involved in the White Ribbon campaign in 2019, I can actually, the awareness was so impactful. Listening to women and girls' voices, voice their demands, moved the county government to respond. Fast forward to 2021, the county has deployed more health care workers, and I can confidently say doctors to patient ratio has really improved. This is just one of the examples we are seeing, but in Kajando, Kajado particularly, we've seen more impact from including the voices of women and girls in the policies that we are developed, they are being, they are developed in the county. Next slide, Diana. Part of the expressions of interest for strengthening system for safer childbirth include stating the leading challenges to achieving sustained improvement in maternal health in the select geography as identified by women and girls in those regions. A tool that we'd like to share in detail now can be used to support this effort, the What Women Want dashboard. So when first, then I complete the video. What Women Want dashboard. This is the default view. There are buttons at the top of the dashboard that allow users to find out more about what Women Want campaign that was done in 2018 and results published in 2019. What an overview video and then activate a step-by-step -step tutorial that will walk you through the dashboard directly in your own time. The first stop in using the dashboard is to go to the, select, to the section in the upper left that features the filter tools. Within this section, you will see two tabs 
One allows you to drill down to get more specific information on response by country, category, age, and even keyword. Let's choose Kenya for now. The other tab allows you to compare two, two types of responses. This can be especially useful when attempting to contrast the responses from countries or to find similarities and differences between various age ranges. Let's choose Nigeria as the comparison. The upper right of the dashboard shows the number of women who responded either in total or for the specific filters you have selected in a histogram of their ages. Directly below the filter section is the breakdown of women's responses by topic box. As I mentioned earlier, over 1 million responses were coded and categorized by White Ribbon Alliance, either through extensive hand coding or through digital means, including natural language processing and machine learning techniques. Our code book separated responses into 39 categories to cover demands ranging from more and better health prof professionals, water, sanitation and hygiene, and respectful and dignified care. Our code book is available online to allow anyone the chance to see behind the scenes on how coding and categorizing decisions were made. This is just another way we are tempted to be as open as possible with this work. Below the breakdown of the category bar graph is a section that focuses on, on the top words and phrases mentioned within response demands. There are three views available, one word response, just like respect, two word phrases or three word phrases. This allows for much fuller understanding of what was actually being asked for and how it was often phrased and grouped and paired with other demands. Let's say we wanted to take a deeper look into women's demands in Kenya for respectful and dignified care. As we look at the top single most phrase, rising to the top is doctor, respect, woman. This might give you a general idea of what women were asking for, but let's click into the three word phrase tab just look at the responses and you see abusive language, good communication skills, use polite language popping up. Women and girls are fed up being treated poorly at health facilities. They wanted to, to be spoken to with kindness and respect. You've seen how when selecting a country, the dashboard will filter and show only responses from that country. But you can also select multiple countries to look at responses from an entire region. Let's add Uganda and Tanzania to the mix to see the dashboard at a regional level. This will be the East African region. We can drill down even further by searching within this category for the keyword water. We are now only seeing the times water was used within the wash code we can also exclude text. Let's try exclude drinking. Now the dashboard is only showing us water in context outside of drinking. You can see what women were requesting when it comes to water, having, when it comes to having access to water for washing or bathing. I know cleanliness is a huge policy issue right now, particularly with the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. So another example we can try is looking into clean. We are going to clear the search term functions and replace water with clean to see how the dashboard changes. We can now exclude water to see responses that just had to do with basic cleanness and not the request for clean water. The dashboard allows everyone everywhere the chance to examine what women want campaigns responses at a unique level of detail, a first for transparency in the nonprofit sector that we hope to see replicated in other organizations, campaigns. Thank you, Diana, for that. Um, the dashboard is on our white, uh, on our 
White Ribbon Alliance website, you can be able to navigate it. It has a tutorial that you can step, take a step by step and you'll be able to dive deeper into raw voices of women from the 2018, 2019 campaign. All of them have been coded there and you can read and be directed on how to use it in your own time. This was just a brief recording that was given an highlight of how the tool works. And now to the power tools. These power tools have just been released and we hope that um, you will find them useful, useful in their advocacy work and we believe that they are going to be very impactful. Developed from years of expertise in mobilizing and organizing individuals and communities to effect change, our new Power Up Program Planning Guide and Power On, a toolkit for community organizing are another key set of resources that can support your expression of interest as well. These power tools include practical guidance and worksheet to support women, girls, and communities to identify changes they would like to see, create a program plan, and organize collective actions. Both these tools correctly support, currently support the advocacy and community engagement efforts of White Ribbon Alliance alliances across the world and our partners and stakeholders, those who we work with in coalition and partnership. They walk you step by step through putting WRS What Women Want methodology into action. WRS Power Model presented in this guide span the advocacy continuum from social and behavior change communication to political advocacy to spark change across households, communities, and countries. Successful implementation of the power model is intended to immediately result in improved healthcare, health access, behaviors, and decision-making. The power model is unique in that it assumes women and girls are inherently powerful, and there is no greater force to change, to change than when they are, very, they are at the center they are at the very center, determining project priorities, designing programs, and making decisions. The power model is underpinned, underpinned by belief that women and girls are the experts regarding their own lives and experiences and know best what is needed to improve their own health and well-being. Women and girls, wider communities, and support systems, including development stakeholders, can and should be consulted, included in project planning and activities, but those who are expected to most benefit from a project must drive it. We believe that having access and making use of the What Women Want dashboard and this power tool set will support all of our expression of interest for the Strengthening System for Safer Childbirth initiative. And we hope this, can, this has been helpful and want to thank you all for taking part in this virtual seminar. And I hope that um, I've been audible and clear enough so I can take some questions either on the chat or you can raise your hand and we'll be able to take some questions. Diana and Tara, you can assist me check if there are some questions on the chat box for us to be able to respond. Yes, I'm on the chat box, um, Angel. There's no questions at the moment. There are no questions at the moment. We also welcome comments about the presentation. Any comments? Hi, thank you very much uh, for the presentation. Um, no extra comments from me. Um, I really like to hear from others if they have any um, uh, further comments. I mean, the only perhaps the thing I'll perhaps say is that, you know, from uh, an MSD from others' perspective, we really do believe um, integration of women's voices in solutions. Um, is really important, both in terms of actually informing the intervention that's been des uh, designed um, or implemented, 
but also from a sustainability point of view in ensuring that there is buy-in and community and decision makers understand that what is being proposed is the the needs has been expressed by uh, by w women within their community and those that are, they're responsible for. Over. Thank you very much. Um, if we don't have any questions, uh, we'll be sharing the recording to all of you. And thank you for joining this webinar. And goodbye for now. Have a good Hi, day. Hi, Angel. Have a good Angel, sorry to interrupt you. Um, it actually looks like there are now a few questions in the chat box. Um, so let's see. Uh, one person asked, can you elaborate on the feedback loop, please? Another question is specific to the dashboard. Can data analyzed on the dashboard be extracted and exported? And then also, what other states in Nigeria were women engaged? So maybe that is a question for Taria. Okay, um, so in Nigeria, women were engaged in, in Abuja, in Niger states, in River states, in Delta states, in Bauchi states. But a lot of the, about 50% of the voices came from Niger state specifically. Uh, currently, the dashboard cannot uh, be ported, uh, but you can contact us should you be looking for data that is in the dashboard and you will require it extracted. We'll be, we can make it available for you. But in the dashboard, you can read and write and take out key points, voices, raw voices of women and girls from across all the countries using the different, you know, comparison, age, location, and even social economic uh, statuses. Yeah, there's a question from Telma. There's a question um, regarding if there's going to be another What You May Want campaign in Nigeria. Um, I'm not aware right now if there'll be another What's the main one campaign in Nigeria? However, most of the work we're doing currently is um, ensuring that um, the top 10 demands decision makers are doing something about that. So um, it's more of the advocacy work and getting the wings for women's demands that is more of a focus at this moment. Over, Angel. In the beginning of this year, we did another listen where we spoke to mobilizers and some women who had taken part in the 2019 and 2018 campaign. And another listen was just to find out, has anything changed? Is change happening? And another listen is available on our website. And you can see about mobilizers and women talking about the changes they've seen in their communities, in their health facilities that have happened after the 2018-2019 campaign. So in Kenya and other specific countries, there has been another listen after the 2018 and 2019 campaign. Any other question, Molly? Yes, um, and thanks, Angel. You might also, um, could you elaborate a bit on the Midwives Voices campaign as well, Angel? So um, particularly in Kenya, our, one of our top requests from women and girls was competent and enough midwives in health facilities. And therefore we went, we came back to listen to midwives and to understand what is it that they really want for them to be able to deliver the quality, respectful and dignified care to women and girls in Kenya. We launched a report uh, last month uh, a pilot report featuring about 100 and 130 women from about five counties that sought to answer one question from midwives. What is that one thing you want to be able to deliver, um, you know, quality healthcare to women and girls when they come to you? And the, the report uh, will be published on their website soon, but it's a continued exercise you know, uh, Nigeria, Malawi, Pakistan, have also rolled out listening exercise to midwives so that they can then get what the midwives want and link it to the requests and voices of women 
and therefore will then be able to link these two and hold government stakeholders, policymakers um, accountable to deliver to midwives so that they can deliver to mothers and girls when they go to seek services to them. I don't know whether Talia would like to add anything for, about that. No, I'm fine, Angel. I think you've done a fantastic job by that. Thanks, Angel. It also looks like Maggie has her hand up. Maggie has a question. Thanks. I hope you can hear me clearly. Thank you, Angel and the team for the very informative presentation. My question regards um, the geographic location, because these interviews, and specifically for Kenya, these interviews were done in some target counties in Kenya, and the dashboard does represent uh, findings or information from what women want in these uh, counties. So in response to the expression of interest, countries expected to limit if, uh, their application to the targeted counties that were interviewed because indeed the dashboard has information uh, from this uh, specific uh, account. So I hope you got my question clearly regarding the counties and response uh, limited towards uh, these target counties that were interviewed. And I think uh, the question can be answered by WRA or by MSD. Um, I'll take that. Um, uh, no, the, the simple answer is that it's not limited to this kind of at all. This is really to give you an example of how WRA um, have been able to integrate um, or elevate women's voices in response to local needs. So, and the encouragement from us is to you know how we, in whichever geography it is that you're your focus on on or proposing to uh, to work in um, that um, that approach or an approach in terms of integrating women's voices in terms of understanding the needs on the ground and, and the solutions that you're proposing um, does uh, uh, reflect um, uh, some engagement in you know, bringing bring their voices to the to the fore. Great, thank you. Thank you very much. And the power model, the power tools will be able to help people do a version of what women want locally in their own spaces. It walks you through the methodology locally by asking, you know, women and girls about their needs to, to, to voice their needs. And then you can be able to use that to tailor your projects, your, your in planning and, you know, executing the projects. Any other question, please? Hi, Angel. There's one more question from Emeka in the chat box, she wrote, do you think that depending on where we might be targeting for our EOI and interventions, that we might need to have some inquisition as to what women want, especially because of the wide diversity in Nigeria? So maybe this is also a question for Taria to come in on. Um, Taria, did you get the question? Yeah. Sorry, can I just uh, also uh, chime in um, here? Uh, I think absolutely, um, in whichever geography it is, whether it's at a district, um, count, uh, state, or even at a country level, um, it's important to be able to lean into data evidence in terms of that informs what you're proposing that reflects what it is that the community is actually asking for or how it's responding to the needs of, uh, of communities on, on the ground versus, as I mentioned in my the part of my presentation, versus um, what one could argue is uh, a traditional um, way of, um, of, of working in the past, where we put in the solution before the actual, so like, you know, the defined needs on the ground informed by uh, those on the ground. Um, so, yes, absolutely. I think, you know, some way in which, you know, we are looking at uh, the, the local needs and responding with local solutions is at the heart of what we're trying to do with um, the Strengthening System for Safe Childbirth Initiative. Over. Thank you, Tayo. Uh, Tara, there's a question on whether WRA in Nigeria uh, uh, yeah. did, did private sector organizations to support in implementing the demands of the women. Um, Vivian, um, yes, we, we worked with um, one private sector organization that is still currently um, in the process to provide water for some health facilities. And we're, we're looking forward to partnering with more 
private sector organizations um, to, 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 to do that. I will put my email here um, if you have any more questions because we're running out of time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, if you still have any present questions, um, you, we will email you the recording of this and you can email back and we'll be able to you know, answer all your questions. And thank you again for joining us. Have a nice day, a good evening, wherever you are. Thank you for joining us.